Hello and welcome to this review of Heir to the Throne Canadian Whiskey from Rebel Spirits of Gardena, California. Interestingly, the company is no longer in business. I went to look it up, so they were bought out, and the other website it doesn't really show any of the products. Uh, I bought this at Walmart a few years ago. They had it on a closeout for like $15.65. I don't know what the original price was, but I don't think it was selling. It's a purple box. It's got this intricate and ornate Canadian crest, cross swords, an eagle, a crown, with a date. Not a date. I don't know what that is. It's too tiny. Uh, Fleur de Lis at the bottom representing the French culture of Canada, the subculture. Maple leaves, two griffins on either side of the shield, and two more cross swords. Product of Canada, 40% alcohol by volume, matured in oak casks, ultra smooth blended Canadian whiskey. I thought it was an odd item. And uh, when I looked up on Rebel Spirits, when it was, the company was in existence, like the day I bought this, um, they didn't talk about this, so if you know anything about Heir to the Throne, I don't know what throne they, intend to, they intended to claim, but uh, here's the bottle, same emblem here on the label with an ornate background, gold background on the purple. It's not textured, it's just a flat label adhered to the bottle. All right. No age statement, nothing. Just says uh, aged in oak cast. Uh, it's an unusual squat shaped bottle. It's sweating in this humidity in here. Uh, hope the camera doesn't fog up like I did on that. A beta strawberry lager video, which I deleted, it was so foggy. There's a date, guys, and it says 11 11. I guess that's 11 a.m. at 11 minutes after. L29397. Don't know what that means. 259AF. <clears throat> Strange. Guess I bought this in 2017. Don't really recall. Let's check it out for what it's worth. This is the first video review and probably the last for this Canadian, obscure Canadian whiskey in the world. Didn't see it on Distiller. I didn't see it on Proof 66. So it's about as rare as they come. Uh, finish peeling off this uh, um, plastic shroud. This little piece here. Come on now, the video is taking some time. I like this. It's a cork and it's a real cork. It's not that plastic stuff that you get with some of these. And it's wet too. I don't know why that would be. This thing was upright. So. Getting more intriguing as we go. I've not seen this listed anywhere. I think um, I've not talked to anyone else who ever had it or knew anything about it. So that's the mystery to me. I'll just throw the box away after I take the photo. Um, the appearance is not, I guess, golden. I was going to say amber, but I guess that's just gold. Maybe there's an amber tint. Seems kind of watery in the body. Um, no, it didn't overflow. See about the, the lacing. 
nice alcohol eggs. The minimum age for Canadian whiskey is three years, so it has to be aged in the cask for three years. The general rule is that they um, age each component separately, then they blend it, and then they bottle it. Okay. A perfect blend of Canadian whiskies, which have been carefully distilled and then matured in oak casks. And it doesn't say matured together. That's the thing about black velvet. They say ours is better. I didn't find that, but they said theirs is better because they they distill the whiskies, the high wine, the high rye. Well, they say the corn high wine, the rye high wine, the grain neutral spirits. That's what they call it on black velvet. People say Canadian whiskey doesn't use grain neutral spirits. Well, black velvet may be an error. But I, don't, I wouldn't think they would be, but they're saying they take the grain neutral spirits and then they, and it could be the flavorings as well, and they're, blend, they're blending it, then aging it, so they can marry together in the barrel for three years, or eight years if it's the reserve. This is not making that claim. Okay, it's probably done in the traditional Canadian style. It looks about the, it's a lot darker than Canadian mist, but it's not. Is it colored? I don't know. The aroma is um, kind of standard Canadian. Crown Royal, one I have not bought. And I got all this, and I keep doing and that's the most popular. It seemed like if I was trying to get the views right, get your view count up, I would be doing the most popular one, the one that would get thousands of views probably instead of one that's going to get 12 views, you know. But that's not my main interest. It's just reviewing them and talking about them, seeing how they how these brands pan out. But um, I do want to review the Canadian, the uh, Cr uh, Crown Royal. I just will probably be very old before I get to it. it. Seems like there's some spiciness and some caramel candy type thing that you get with these Canadian whiskeys, and that's coming from like the corn, I guess, base, and that's like caramel corn, candy corn type item. It's not too aromatic. What about wood? There's a faint toothpick wood type thing. Toothpick wood, but not the charred oak. I don't really get that. They're, they're using oak cast. Almost invariably with a Canadian whiskey, they're aging it in used bourbon barrels. And it could be very old barrels. Is there anything off or unpleasant or unusual or cheap or bad about it? No, I have to say there isn't, and it's not that Sazerac style, strange, but to me not unpleasant, but it is odd, almond extract thing that John Anilia was describing. Nothing like that, it just smells like standard whiskey, Canadian blended whiskey. And remember, $15.65, I'm pretty sure that was the price, $15.65 for the bottle. It was on a closeout and they had the yellow tag and I kept looking and they had like 10 boxes and then the last time I went they had two I think left. And I said, uh, yeah, the next time it's going to be gone and I'll never see it again. And I'm certain I would have never seen it again. And I've never seen it in any store ever except for this local Walmart. There's a lot of corn whiskey in here. The Canadian style, you know. Column still base whiskey, probably 80%. Whatever you want to call it, it's unaged. Once, you know, and then at the point when they start to process it together. Or as I should say process it together, right? The process. Um, there's certainly a rye note. So this, it's got rye, whiskey, and it seems to be a little stronger than you might believe it would be, or expected it to be. Um, there seems to be barley whiskey in here, malt whiskey. There's that yeast barley note. There's no burn on it, no yeast, barley burn. It's like a bread dough. 
peppery, okay, so we get the sweet candy corn, the bread dough, and the, the, um, the rye spice. Then you're looking at another part of this pie, yeah. another percentage of the pie, another fraction of the flavor. It's probably some kind of flavorings, blending sherry more than likely. And maybe some rum, and maybe some brandy, and maybe some bourbon. I don't know. It's probably a small amount. It's not a heavily flavored thing. I mean, more than likely they were trying to mimic Crown Royal. Like a, but the, the price was like the same. Because what is Crown Royal at Walmart? $22.99? And sometimes around the holidays... It'd be $22.99 with two glasses. Walmart had Jack Daniels today. The rye, the regular, all kind of Jack Daniels, $24.99. And sometimes they'll lower it to $21.99. Not too much. Um, so when, it, when this was not on the closeout, I think it was like, it was probably like $24. And then um, they just determined, hey, ain't nobody going to buy this. Get rid of it. Nice looking package, not extraordinary, but it's got a cork. If I could find out who makes this stuff, I'd be so delighted. Rebel Spirits was not a distiller. Like so many other companies, Laird's. And, um, Majestic Distilling. They simply are a brand handler. They buy and sell brands. Or Bellows, who used to be in business. Uh, Luxco would be a good example for today. Big one, a big company. They, they handle brands. They contract with people to produce the stuff. Whether it's rum, scotch, Canadian whiskey, bourbon, blended American whiskey. They develop the packaging. They develop the marketing. They develop the bottle design. They bring in the product. And they may have a bottling plant. May have one. Majestic Distilling does, and I believe it's also a rectifying plant over there in Baltimore County, Maryland. So I think they kind of catch it midway and do more with it. Same thing with Laird's, but uh, and bottling. But um, I think Rebel Spirits was kind of like the winery exchange. They were just an office, but controlled a lot of oddball brands that lurk around the dark corners of America's cities. I shouldn't say that. Um, the mouthfeel is medium and the finish is moderate. It doesn't drop right off and it doesn't linger around becoming cloying or gross. Seems like a perfect Canadian whiskey, honestly. I'm sipping on it. I'm enjoying it. Is there anything wrong with it? No. Is there a lot right with it? Yes. The price was seems fair. Now, you know, 15, whatever it was, 15 something, it seems fair. Maybe even $22.99 would be fair because it's probably comparable to Crown Royal. This I do not know. I need to do a blind taste test. But um, I don't feel like I paid too much and I don't feel like I got ripped off. It's uh, mid priced and uh, it seems to uh, fit that. It's not Canadian Limited level or Rich and Rare or um, Northern Lights, Lord Calvert, because this was ten ninety nine, nine ninety nine or ten ninety nine. I can't remember if I got on sale. Ten ninety nine, eight ninety nine, eight ninety nine for the liter. True story. Um, so those would be more your really cut rate. Although in the blind taste test, they tend to perform much better than expected. I don't want to keep going on and on. But you might say, I wanted to watch all the video reviews for Heir to the Throne, and yours was so long, but then mine is the only one, <laughs> right? So, all right, um, I'm going to score it an A minus. I think it's a 90, 91 out of 100. It really is an A minus. It's an excellent product. Sadly, this video has no real purpose because chances are you will never see this product. But at least I can say I did the video, hey, right? So, <laughs> Les Aile Bon Ton Roule, an excellent product. 
but it's strange, not the flavor, the existence of it is strange. Oh, so very strange, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.